peace on earth. In Luke 2, the angels appear to the shepherds, as we've heard a number of times in a number of songs this morning, in the field, and they praise God, God saying, glory to God in the highest, and peace on earth to those on whom God's favour rests. The angels say, peace on earth. And yet, when I think about the birth of Jesus, I'm not envisaging a very peaceful thing, that the circumstances surrounding the birth of Jesus are by no means peaceful. I was talking to someone just before church and we were talking about what we want to talk to God about in heaven. And one of those things is childbirth. Childbirth is not a peaceful experience at all. A teenage girl finds herself pregnant, pregnant by God. That's a bit tough to explain, you know, to your fiancé, to to anyone. You know, God got me pregnant. Can't imagine that conversation was very peaceful. Oh, yeah, good. Congratulations. Congratulations. You know, and so from the very beginning, not overly peaceful. Then at some point, she's nine months pregnant. That's not peaceful any day. (laughs) Then at some point, she's on a donkey traveling across the country. Nine months pregnant on a donkey. I went into labor a few times when I had, was having my twin girls and every one of those car trips to the hospital was not peaceful and that was a car on a flat freeway. So I can't imagine Mary and Joseph on a donkey Mary pregnant. They pull into town and, you know, she's freaking out a little bit. There's are my words. Get me a place to stay, Joseph. I need somewhere to stay that's comfortable, you know. At least do me that favour. This whole journey hasn't been very peaceful. I need a comfortable bed. And no, they have a baby in a barn. That's what I've always wanted, right? <laughs> With the animals, the animal poop, the barn stuff, you know. Perfect. And so you've got this young girl, has a baby, no epidural, <laughs> Jesus is born, the Prince of Peace enters the planet Earth. And then the next thing we hear, King Herod gets threatened. He's freaking out. I've heard rumours about this. There's been prophecies. This guy is going to overthrow me. And so the king says, let's just kill this baby. Go find him and kill him. In fact, just to make sure, let's kill every baby under the age of two. Just to make sure we've got our bases covered. Kill them as well. Any baby that's male. And so here we have the Prince of Peace born into a world, and all of a sudden these innocent baby boys are being murdered. That's tough to reconcile, right? Sometimes we gloss over that in, in the Christmas message. Sorry. Phil always tells me I'm very bad at using these. I should use the, these mics, but it doesn't fit my head. But it's tough to reconcile. Yeah, sometimes we gloss over it and we think oh, it's all pretty and the manger seems pretty and we put some fairy lights on it. It makes it even more pretty. But peace wasn't instant or peace wasn't instantly apparent. How do we reconcile the coming of Jesus to bring peace on earth with the events of the time? How how do we reconcile the coming of Jesus to bring peace on earth with a deep revelation of what's going on in our world, in some of our homes, in our communities, in our countries, country against country? So as I've prepared over the last couple of weeks this message, I've, I've had to ask myself if Jesus was the Prince of Peace, who came to bring peace on earth, did he fail? Because honestly, why are we still needing to sing let there be peace on earth 2,000 years after the Prince of Peace came? You see, sometimes we believe, don't we, that peace would be the thing that would remove anxiety or peace would calm me when I'm disturbed or peace would remove and stop war and violence. But this morning, as we have a look for a moment at these words sung by the angels when they appeared to these humble shepherds, peace on earth. And let's consider what maybe it actually means for us today. You see, throughout the Old and the New Testament, there are some 400 references, direct references to peace, not to mention a whole lot of indirect allusions about peace. And while there are various words in the original languages of the Bible that refer to peace, the deepest root stems back to this consequential word that we heard about in the video this morning, and you would have heard the word before, shalom. Shalom at its core means to be whole, to be complete. And while it's a common um, greeting even now amongst Jews all over the world to this day, this simple word shalom is full of meaning, and it means more than just peace as in quietness or silence or calmness. It goes well beyond that. Shalom literally means God's highest and most complete good be upon you and all associated with you. The peace of God 
goes way beyond a cosy, warm feeling or even the absence of war. It's more about relational harmony that seeks a deep commitment, in my opinion, to the work of justice in truth and righteousness, all the things that God came to bring. The peace of God is a full, satisfying, rich fruit of His Spirit to His people and to His creation. The shalom of God is intended for relational goodness, harmony throughout, because peace was the original order of creation and remains in the heart of God for His creation. That's what He's about. He's working out His peace for all creation. And so this was part of the prophesied plan of God since before Jesus was born. We read about it in Isaiah. Wouldn't be surprised if you've used it here in the last couple of weeks. Proclaimed 700 years before the incarnation. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who dwelt in the land of deep darkness, on them the light has shone. For to us a child is born. To us a son is given and the government shall be upon his shoulder and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. And of the increase of his government and of peace, there will be no end. Prince of Peace. We've already looked at that word peace, shalom, but for Prince the word is sar. The Sar Shalom is the Prince of Peace. Sar means the one who is in charge. It means the captain, it means the Lord, it means the chief, it means the general, you know, the top, the top dog, if you like. The Romans, they use that word Sar, it became Caesar, you know, the one in charge, like Julius Caesar. And Shalom, as we looked at, means rest, wholeness, completeness. So maybe it would help us to think about Jesus, the Sar Shalom. You could say he's the captain of rest. He's the Lord of of wholeness. He's the chief of contentment. He's about bringing fullness rather than calm and quiet and still. Peace is often spoken of, especially at Christmas time. Many of our um, carols include the word peace, but peace isn't this warm feeling, remember. It's this wholeness, completeness, rest that comes from being in a relationship with the one who loves us and us knowing that. Peace is from God and it is for all people. I love the fact that we first hear about this peace on earth in the Christmas story from the angels to the shepherds. Now, the shepherds are a little bit underrated in the Christmas story. You know, lots of kids get them in the nativity, get that part of the nativity play because they don't have any words to say. You know, they just get dressed up nice and easy. It's easy to find a sheet and a staff of some kind. Um, but the shepherds at this point in history, these, these guys were the least likely to be chosen to receive a message. They were the outcasts of society. In, in Jewish society especially, they were looked down on because they had to be out in the field with the sheep, which was a dirty job. And so they weren't allowed to go into the temple to worship. They couldn't go and be next to the presence of God. They couldn't go to the temple. They were considered spiritually unclean. But God chose them to reveal His plan. God chose the unclean, simple shepherds, people that the world had pushed to the side, people who were excluded from the world, God chose to include in this special message about peace on earth. Peace on earth was declared to a bunch of shepherds. And what did they do? They responded. They said, wow, let's go and see. God's not selective. Anyone can receive his peace. Jesus himself speaks in these terms. In Luke chapter 7, I think these verses are going to come up. Luke chapter 7, verse 50. To a woman who'd led a sinful life, Jesus says, your faith has saved you. Go in peace. Peace was for that sinful woman. In Luke 8, 48, to the woman with the issue of blood, he says to her, daughter, your faith has healed you. Go in peace. In John 16, 33, he tells his disciples and those around who are listening, I've told you these things so that you that in me you may have peace. The Bible promises that when we set our minds, our actions on the things of God, when we, when we choose His way, when we choose to listen to His voice, the peace of God, which surpasses all comprehension, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus, Philippians 4 verse 7 tells us. And Isaiah 23, 26 verse 3 says, You will keep in perfect peace 
those whose minds are steadfast because they trust in you. It will keep you in peace when you trust in Jesus. And the amazing thing is that even when your private world is falling apart, Jesus can give you that peace that goes beyond human understanding. Even when the world is at war, peace can be a reality because Jesus is the Prince of Peace. He's the source of peace. That is the promise of God for this Christmas as every Christmas, as every day. We search for peace in all kinds of places, don't we? We search for peace in all sorts of places, all sorts of ways. We, we take on lots of different activities to help us find peace, yoga, Pilates, mindfulness, meditation, all sorts of things. Helpful. They can be really helpful. But Scripture puts it pretty plainly that peace ultimately comes from God and it comes through knowing and having a relationship with Him and trusting Him. Jesus brings the peace. Our job is to stay under His reign. Jesus brings the peace. He's the Sar Shalom. Sar Shalom. He's the Prince of Peace. Our job is to stay under His reign. So I want to give you two quick thoughts as we wrap up this morning. Hopefully something that can help you to grab hold of something, a bit of a so what. So firstly, Jesus, as I said, He's the Sar Shalom. He is the peace who comforts you. Some of you right now, you've got this crazy, sorry that are just crazy. I know some of your stories, from so speaking to some of you over the last few weeks, that there doesn't seem to be any peace on the outside of your life. But I wanna tell you this morning that Jesus wants to bring you peace. You don't have to create peace. You don't have to look for it in, in your world or clear out some things to experience peace. He is there with you. The words of John 14 verse 27 say, peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. Notice it's not our peace that we create. I'm looking for a bit of peace. My peace I give you, Jesus says. He says, I don't give it to you as the world gives. Don't let your hearts be troubled. Do not be afraid. Jesus gives you his peace. And this comes from acknowledging that he's in charge, that he's the one who sets the agenda, that he's got this and he is the expert. He's the expert in peace, in rest, now, I, I like to think about this when my life feels a little bit out of control. I like to think about my fears because this is how he started. He appeared to the shepherds and said, fear not, or the angels did, fear not. And one of the things I'm scared of is heights. But I've discovered over time, it's not so much that I'm afraid of heights, but I'm a, afraid of falling or um, when it's sort of in my control. More specifically, I'm afraid of Phil falling is the truth. When, whenever we go anywhere, he'll go right to the edge of cliffs. And um, I said to him once about eating bad. Am I allowed to tell a little story about you? I said to him once about eating bad. He was eating all this bad food. I said, Phil, you're going to have a heart attack. He goes, no, I'm going to fall off a cliff before I'd have a heart attack. Like he's acknowledged that that's probably his reality. But like I'm scared when I'm in control. I went on holidays recently and I was able to climb up stairs up a cliff and I felt like I could literally if I wanted to like look over and I might fall over when I'm in control I'm scary whereas I have quite comfortably a little bit of fear but much more comfortably gone bungee jumping and use zip lines you know the zip line where you're harnessed in because I'm harnessed in and someone else is controlling it I just have to go along for the ride it's like the zip line things the best things ever and I like to think about that I'm, I can rely on the machinery, I can rely on the instructors, it's not about me, there's been very few, there has been some, but very few deaths around the world of people on zip lines and bungee jumpers because there's someone in charge, that they know what to do, they've got me harnessed in, it's okay. And I like to think about that in my relationship with Jesus as well. When I'm trusting Jesus, when I've given Him control, when I'm under His reign, when I'm listening to His voice, I can experience peace because he's got this. He's, he's the one that's in charge. He's the one that's guiding, controlling the world. He's the one that I can pray to and he's the one that's in charge of the nations that I feel upset in my stomach about who are warring. That's how I have peace. If, we're, if, if you don't have his peace today, he's inviting you to draw near to him. Don't, not to try to do it yourself, not to try to find the energy on the, or the space to have peace, not trying to figure it out yourself not trying to do life outside of the Sar Shalom, the Prince of Peace. But as Philippians 4 says, as I read before, don't be anxious about every, anything, but in prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And then, 
the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Have you experienced that peace? that sense of wholeness, completeness, the the knowledge of him being in charge, him being in control. I've had to get to that point a couple of times in my life where I've had to stop and say, God, what is is it that you want from me? Because I'm not feeling your peace. What's my role in this? Because God, you're the captain of peace. Sometimes we don't know just how trustworthy God is until we actually trust Him. And that's my invitation to you today. At the moment, maybe He's saying to some of you, trust me. If you're feeling unsettled, trust me. It's funny, isn't it? The Australian dream is about working to have it all. Working to have it all, working to have a house, car, 2.3 kids, whatever it is these days. But the kingdom of God is about losing it all, is about letting go and about acknowledging that God is the one who is in charge, submitting to Him, acknowledging it is Him who saves, and in Him we find peace. And just as importantly, the second thing I want us to have a quick think about this morning is that Jesus, the Sar Shalom, He's also the peace who calls us to have peace with others. There's a peace of God, peace with God. But if you have the peace of God, what's going to outflow from that? Peace with others. In fact, under God's reign as members of God's kingdom, we're called to pursue peace in all of our relationships. God cares a lot about peace in our relationships. The Bible talks about relationships and being right with people all the time. And it doesn't happen by accident. Just a few verses in the New Testament that say this, Romans 14, 19. Therefore, let us pursue the things which make for peace. Pursue the things. Keep your attention on those things that make for peace with people. And in Hebrews 12, 14, it says, pursue peace with all people. The message of Christmas is peace on earth. But those who know peace, those who live under God's reign, those who understand that they can trust Jesus and that live with wholeness and completeness in themselves, need to then extend that to other people. It's how we operate in the kingdom of God, where the king's name is the Prince of Peace. A few weeks ago, Brad Watson shared a message and you can go back and have a look at the YouTube channel if you haven't um, seen that message, a great message um, that we were, I've been a part of that too, preaching through the Beatitudes. And this one was, blessed are the peacemakers for it is they who will be recognised as children of God. That actual translation said they will be called children of God. Brad explained that's actually how we're known as God's children, by the way that we act. And one of those things is being peacemakers. People who truly live at peace with others will be recognised as God's children. The Prince of Peace came to earth, walked and showed us the way to peace. And so when we follow, we'll be known as His children. He came to restore peace, to make a path. He had in mind people who were pursuing relationships with the people around them, to help them, to lead together. to follow together in the way that God led, justice, truth, righteousness for all. That's how we make peace. We journey with others on that journey together. Peacemaking goes way beyond calling a truce in the middle of the fight. Peacemaking goes way beyond just saying, okay, you can have it your way. Peacemaking pursues the help of God in making something that has gone wrong right. That's the whole concept of wholeness that stems stems back to shalom. Calling a truce is a step in the right direction, yes. But if all we do is stop shooting one another, it's not going to solve any issues that leads to true and complete peace. A ceasefire may just lead to a cold war that drives the issues further underground in countries, but also in our own own relationships. We need to deal with things in an open and honest way and move together towards reconciliation, forgiveness where needed, and wholeness in relationships. I wonder as I've been talking about relationships this morning, whether God has prompted you about a relationship that you need to make real peace with. Not just a ceasefire, but wholeness, completeness. 
the true peacemakers Jesus had in mind were the people who were seeking God's highest good, not just for their lives, but for the lives of those people with whom they met, who they journeyed, who they shared with. And so this Christmas, I encourage us to again, yes, to seek the peace of Christ in our own lives, but also to outlive that in our life so that we can be seen as peacemakers in our world, as children of God. For once God's worked peace in us, God can work peace through us. And my prayer for you is that that will be evident in your life, in the lives of those around you who you need to encourage you. And the result will be that kind of shalom that God desires to reign in the lives of His people as His kingdom comes and His will is done on earth as it is in heaven. Bringing peace is how we live out the kingdom of God here on earth. And I encourage you to find ways to do that in this crazy, busy Christmas season. So do you have the peace of God? The peace of the ruler of the peace, the prince of peace in your life? That's the first question this morning. And secondly, do you live at peace with others in such a way that you're recognised as a child of God? Our world still needs peace. Jason's going to come and he's going to lead us in a song and I don't know if you've sung this here before, but um, we might just be able to reflect on the words at first. The song's called Light of the World. Um, and one, the, the first verse, part of the way through, it says, says this. It's a song full of imagery. It says, child, a child prays for peace on earth and she's crying out from a sea of hurt. Isn't that an amazing line? Someone that's hurt, that's struggling, that knows they need something greater than themselves, still crying out for peace on earth. And the refrain says, O come, Emmanuel, God, Prince of Peace, come and be with us. The reality is He is here with us. Let's notice that. Let's embrace that. Let's live like we really know that so that others too may experience His peace. We're just gonna reflect. If it does help to come and pray, you're more than welcome to come and kneel to ask God for peace in your own life or peace in someone else's life that you know. Maybe you want to pray for our world, but reflect and join in um, when you get to know the song as Jason and the team lead us. Thanks, Jason.